hello from Gardening at Dwensa here in Ireland and you are very welcome to the July Garden Tour. Now today I'm behind the camera but we're going to do the tour of my garden and see everything that's looking good and what I've been up to. It's July so that means a good cutting back has been done recently and we always talk about the Chelsea chop which happens in May but the more important chop as far as I'm concerned is the one that happens in July when we remove everything that's gone over or looking brown to make sure that our gardens look great all the way through August and into September. So let's get on with the July garden tour. For a change of pace we're going to start this garden tour over here at the long border and that's I suppose because I've been doing quite a bit of work here you will not believe the amount of stuff I took off this border yesterday just yesterday so there are two full wheelbarrows full of not weeds just plants that had passed their best by and by taking those things off, it just served to freshen up the whole look of this border, but also to allow space for plants that come into their own later in the season and might be squeezed out with the presence of other things. Plants like astrantias or sildacea or various other ones. Now before we get too deeply into the video I just want to let you know that I'm in Southern Ireland and I garden in what roughly equates to hardiness zone 9. We have quite dull summers and very mild winters but this year has been exceptionally hot and there have been almost drought like conditions with the result that there are brown patches in the lawn. We're hoping for rain at the moment and as you can see it's very overcast today so there really is a forecast for a good bit of rain and I have my fingers crossed because the garden really really needs it. One plant that is really coming into its own at the moment is the Lavin tree lily. Now you may recall I moved this lily from a different position in the garden last year so it didn't do great last year but this year it is really getting going and it's not as tall as it will eventually be but my goodness it sure looks good. This lily has actually been in flower for a while but it wasn't really noticeable because of all the plants around it that needed to be cut back chiefly the sildacea and wow just look at it it looks fantastic. The Monarda or Bee Balm is also still looking good, looking a bit shaggy at the moment and I have deadheaded a few little bits of it but the bees are absolutely loving it so it's really living up to its name. Now I've just taken a little step back from that planting we were looking at and you can see where the Sildacea used to be and the Estranches used to be and they've been cut back and it just gives the border a feeling of freshness and space because it really didn't have space just just before I did the cutting back. One plant I want to point out right here at the front is this green vertical one and this is the late flowering aconite that you saw me buy last year in my blue plant hole I think it was and I've placed it right here so by re removing the sildacea and the astranches this thing can now be seen when it comes into flower. It's not in flower yet, but it will come and it will look fantastic because it has the space to shine. Okay, so speaking of lilies, one that really strikes us at the moment is that kind of yellowy white one over there to the right. Now, this is a lily I've had for like eight years, but it was mislabeled when I bought it. So it's supposed to be a different one. Therefore, I have no idea which one this is, but actually it looks really quite well where it's planted against the backdrop of purple foliage and it's beautifully scented too. One great thing about this lily is that it doesn't need staking, which is a definite bonus. So now let's take a quick glance up this section of the long border where you can see that some of the usual favourites like Oriana is still pumping out its colour although I have removed a lot of the spent stems. This is an Alstrom area that goes on flowering for the longest time and I highly recommend it. 
Another firm favourite of mine is Indian Summer with its dark foliage and gorgeous flowers. Grasses are really looking great at the moment as well, such as this Stipa tenuissima, a beautiful grass that I find very trouble free. The only problem can be that Katsuki loves it too, and very often she'll just roll around in it and wreck it a bit. There are several things to come yet in this border. So there's the sedum, which is the one with the variegated leaf and the white flower heads at the moment, that will soon flower pink. There's also lilies at the back and we have white phlox and a giant helianthemum. By the way, this is a rogue lily. When I revamped this border a couple of years ago, I took out all of the really tall lilies, but it seems I missed a few. <laughs> One plant that's recently come into flower and which I'm enjoying a lot is this balloon flower. Now, as you can tell from the shape of the flowers, it's very much in the Campanula family. And I just thought it was always a kind of gimmicky plant, but it turns out it's hardy and it's reliable and it's done really well in this border since I planted it out about a year ago. I think it had spent a long time in a pot before then. Okay, I can actually feel the rain coming, so I think we're going to have to scoot around to the next section of the garden. Over here we have Hydrangea Annabelle, which is looking really quite well. And right in front of it we have Cautlea spicata, which is a gorgeous relative of Roscoa. Now, this looks like Cautlea spicata to me, which I don't think is the one I bought but actually I'm very happy with it. I think this ginger relative has beautiful flowers, quite hardy in my climate, and just a great plant to have anywhere with just a little bit of shade. Somebody recently asked me about Muckdania, so I'm showing it to you now. Now this is a perennial for a shady position, and its great selling point is that it acquires beautiful autumn colors. To the right we have an astilbe, which also has autumn colors that's the very intense red just to the right but if we look carefully at the muckdania leaves you can see that the autumn color is already setting in an easy and great plant to grow normally the muckdania wouldn't be so floppy but like i said we've had a very almost heat wave this summer so this is the result so just a little turn here showing my box balls because I know there's a number of people who are always happy to see the box balls. And let's help head up that section of the garden because I have some lovely stuff to show you. Here to the right, this border is, I guess, doing really well at the moment. The penstemons are still in flower and so is the anthemus and the dahlias, the ones I leave permanently in the ground, are really pumping their stuff at the moment. And I love orange and kind of deep red or deep pink together and this combination here fits the bill. The anthemus is still in full flower and this is one I divided last year but it didn't stop it flopping. So next year I think what I'm going to do is just stake it a little bit because yeah well it's kind of collapsed on itself. Just at the very front here we have phlox coming into flower, the yuccas that you know and a new crocosmia for me down there at the front. Now this one is very pretty, beautiful color. I suppose kind of medium flowers, but the one thing that does worry me slightly is how vigorous it is. So this only went down last year and already it has quite a healthy clump. And we all know how Crocosmia can be a bit of a thug. So I'm gonna to have to watch it carefully. Okay, so down here is where I had a large Campanula last year, the Pritchard's variety and I removed it and the result is that I now have space for a variety of pretty things that aren't as tall as that enormous thug of a Campanula. And in here we have my zinnias coming into flower and these are annuals of course but they're quite late in terms of their flowering. This one, mm, I'm not sure which one this was, 
links but we'll put the name up on the screen but I love them and I love the um, kind of tiny little star like circle that's at the center of the top of the flower absolutely gorgeous a little bit further down we have a couple of things the first is that pink flower you see there on the left which is in its second flush so I have recently cut back the main stems and the side shoots are flowering and this is Francoa uh, one that's been in my garden grew from seed years ago does so so well and the bees love it but that tall biscuity thing there at the back is one of the um, Love Lies Bleeding and I think it's called something like Hot Biscuit. Now it's actually been flowering for a very long time. It's an annual of course. It's been flowering for a very long time but I'm not a hundred percent sure I like it. Not completely sold on it. Anyway, um, I'll think again. I suppose I have seeds so I might actually sow it again for next year but there's just something a bit autumny about the the flower heads. A little bit further down to the left we have more zinnias and just one in flower at the moment but the others are coming and they'll be great when they do. And we have sunflowers in bloom. Now my sunflowers unfortunately all seem to face the wrong way. And of course, Dr. Acula oversees all proceedings in his border there. He's definitely the boss of over here. No, I'm actually quite pleased with how this border has turned out this year. It was very oppressive with the tall campanula. And also I lo lost space because the tall campanula was at the front. It had to be staked. And goodness knows what was going on at the back of the border. <laughs> I have some woodlandsy things in there. But it was lost space to a certain extent because nothing could compete with the height of the campanula. And just over here we have lilies in bloom and this is one I absolutely love. Love those dark colours. Some of them aren't open yet so well you know it means there's stuff to look forward to. And that's the great thing about sprucing things up a bit in, in July. It means that you can look forward to what's yet to come. But I have other lilies to show you. Now, I don't know, but if you look just above these lilies, can you see that yellow over there? And this is a vast planting of the lily known as Concador. They're in here, kind of underneath the leaves of the Tetrapanix rex. There's also a fig tree just there to the left. But if we go around the other side, we'll be able to see them just a little bit better. And here you are, the lily concador, loads of them left open and plenty in bloom at the moment. Beautiful scent, nice yellow colour. I at one stage really loved white lilies and bought lots of white lilies, but they can just be a bit, I don't know, monochrome. It's good to have something to kind of liven up your palette and I think yellow fits the bill there. These ones also manage without staking here and yeah, I highly recommend them. Beautiful, beautiful lily. Okay, so let's move on to a different section of the garden. And leaf texture is important too. So I do have sections in the garden which are just kind of calming and you need to make sure that they don't go brown as well. So like in this section, for example, with the large tetrapanics, I'll remove any yellowing or brown leaves and hopefully that'll do enough to just make it seem fresh. Freshness is what we're after. Down here we have the oak leafed hydrangea, which will very soon be showing us its autumn hues, a really nice plant to have, and some monarda. And over here at the base of one of the hydrangeas, we have mandrake fruits. Now these are used in medicine, I believe. Anyway, if you know the Harry Potter films, you'll recall how the mandrake plant screams when it's repotted. Guess what? Mine don't. Here we have the ligularia bed just coming into bloom. And I think the vibrant yellow, or perhaps you might call that color orange, but those flowers against the dark foliage are really, really lovely. And the bees absolutely love this plant too. And here we have my Saracenia. 
bed because it contains two large Saracenia planters looking very airy with the grasses around it. Again, that Stipa tenuissima, one of my absolute favorite grasses. And the Saracenia provide a lot of color, the, well, the pinky ones do at this stage. The red ones are lovely too. Some of them are going to need a bit of a tidy up soon because there are brown bits showing but i think they're just such wonderful plants they keep on giving all into autumn with their handsome pictures and this is after they have given us unusual flowers in spring a great highly recommended plant and just over to the left is where i planted alstroemeria summer breeze which you recently saw me purchase so now we're going to head on up here where a couple of things are just coming into bloom. This is one of the Aspera hydrangeas, I believe, and there is something very majestic about them with the very large, soft looking leaves. One of my absolute favorites. And just to the right, we have tiger lilies coming into flower together with Lobelia tupa, which is the red spiry plant there to the right. Now these tiger lilies, I propagated them last autumn from bulbils and I have so many small plants at the moment, although it will be a while before they are flowering size. And this is just a bit of a better look at Lobelia tupa, which is a great plant I guess it's kind of borderline hardy here in Ireland but I made a separate video about it which you can look up if you're interested and this is very hot color scheme with orange and red together behind we have the remnants of yellow flowers on Hypericum hidcoat which is a hedge along the length of my garden and so now we'll just move a little bit further up we can see some of the white hydrangea paniculata coming into flower on the left and I guess a Watsonia, orange Watsonia in flower on the right. And Watsonias are great South African plants to have for late summer in the garden. I guess really the drawback as far as I'm concerned is the foliage because they produce a mass of those strappy monocot leaves that so many South African plants do produce and it takes up quite a bit of space. Quick look at the characteristic leaves of my tulip tree. Now this is a North American tree which has very characteristic shape to the leaves but it's a variegated form. Okay we're going to head up to the border there in front of the greenhouse which is just <laughs> I guess just uh, beneath that pine tree there. Alstroemeria oriana just in front of us has been deadheaded recently so there isn't a lot of colour showing but I hope we will get more. And over here we get the first proper glimpse of the green border which is the border in front of the greenhouse and you can see that tall lilies are taking centre stage. We have some even taller sylphium which I will probably get rid of this winter and some leucanthemum, ligularia and flower that sort of thing. And over here we have some more Watsonia this time it's a pink Watsonia which is just kind of going over at this stage but it looked fabulous against the pink of the Diasia personata there behind it just a little while ago. And this salvia there on the left is looking really quite delicate and majestic at the moment with, I suppose it's white tinged with lilac edges to each of the petals, a really fine thing. And down below a plant you'll either love or hate. Many people hate it because it reminds them of dandelions. But this plant from the Azores is, well, I think it's lovely. Heleniums looking good at the moment and this border has been dotted with annuals as well which it is hard to see just at the moment. Right there, can you see it? That's one of the vines, one of the stems from 
the clematis I planted against the old stump and it's gotten away on me and it's kind of mingled through the border which is not what it was supposed to do at all. I'm gonna have to get the secateurs at it now after this video. And a final look at that border there before we go around to the other side to check on my daylily bed. Long term subscribers are going to recall that last year I planted up this bed with daylilies, ones that had been in my garden for years but hadn't flowered for a long time because they weren't getting enough light. So I put them here in full sun where they would get the best of everything. But the result is really, really disappointing because out of all the plants I put down here, some have flowered, but they were the ones that always flowered anyway. There's a whopping total of 13 daylilies I put in here that didn't bother their arses. This one tried, but most of them didn't. So actually I'm going to take most of them out and plant something else in here. I wonder, maybe I can make a peony bed. I do have the one peony right here in the centre that's just beginning to take on its autumn colours. Now this is the one I moved in the video you saw last year and it flowered and has done really well. This is prime location so I'm really not tolerating things that aren't going to do well. Full sun is at a premium in my garden so <laughs> plants need to work if they deserve that. And opposite the daylilies, we have this border here and a section that was just planted up this year. Now, while there are nice things at the front, dahlias and titonia, what we will notice is that the ditch is behind. So this is the farmer's ditch, what was put in to divide our property from the fields beyond. And you can see it very substantially. So I'm gonna to have to do something longer term to cover that up. It really is too prominent. But the plants I put in here are doing well. This here is Titonia, an annual I grew from seed and needs a bit of a dead head but it is doing really well. One of my favorite dahlias is this one called Karma Chalk. It has beautiful dark foliage and very neat flower heads. And in the background, you can see some corn flowers, annual plants I planted in there. And if you look carefully, you can see the gladioli we planted earlier this year. So the gladioli just over there to the left. Well, they grew well. No sign of flowers yet, but that's okay because the other ones I have in the garden have no signs of flower yet either. It's just a late plant. And that kind of brings me to the end of this garden tour video, mostly because it's about to start raining, so I can't bring you over to the other side of the garden, but maybe we'll take a little look at that soon. We will see what the interest is. Um, I hope you're enjoying your garden. I hope that you have done cutting back so that it will look fresh for August. And I'm going to link to a little video I made about doing just that a while ago. It's an old video, but the information is all still perfectly good. So take a look at that if you're interested. Thank you as always for watching. I hope that you'll check back soon for lots more gardening stuff and I will see you in the next video. Bye.